Okay, to get started, let's open up a brand new file. Now this file we prepared beforehand so we can demonstrate the chamfer toolpath. Let's click open existing toolpath and we're gonna look for chamfer toolpath guide example number one dot CRV. And that was installed in your V11 tutorials file. We can just click open. And right away in your 2D view, you're gonna see a set of vectors that we're gonna use in a moment to help with the demonstration. But first of all, we need to take a look at our tool pass tab. So let's just go ahead and switch over to that. Now, the first thing we always do when we're looking at a job is we're gonna take a peek at the material setup. So let's take a look at that. Currently right now, our material thickness is set to a half inch. Our datum is set to the bottom left. We're gonna be zeroing off our material surface and that's important because all of these chamfers are gonna be working from the material surface down. We're gonna ignore the model position because we're not we don't have any 3d content in this project uh, then we just can ignore that it's not important all of our chamfers will be happening at the top of our material and then you're going to need to make sure that your rapid z gaps and your home start position are safe and appropriate for your machine and then we can just go ahead and click ok now your chamfer toolpath is located in your toolpath operations right here at the very end we can just click that this toolpath allows you to easily create chamfers using V-bits, ball nose tools, or engraving tools to create decorative edges. And it's also a great way to create countersunk holes. So in order for us to create a chamfer, we need to select a vector or a series of vectors. We'll just look at this one for now. Working from the top of the form down, first off, we need to specify a start depth. This is the depth at which the toolpath is calculated from. In our example, we want to start at zero, which is the top of our material. Next up, we need to choose a tool where we could use a V-bit tool, a ball nose tool, or an engraving tool. For this example, we're going to look at a V-bit where we will look at an example of creating a chamfer using a ball nose a bit later. We're just going to go over and select the tool now. So let's choose to select, and this will open up our tool database. And here we have a list of all of our V-bits that we have in our shop. We're gonna go ahead and choose the 60 degree V-bit. Here's all the tool geometry and all the settings for our feeds and speeds and all those are fine for what we're gonna do right here. So let's just go ahead and choose select. Next, we need to specify our chamfer dimensions. First up in this part of the form is the angle. You will notice that this box is grayed out, informing us that the value cannot be changed. And that's because we're using a V-bit tool. And so the angle is being pulled from the actual tool, which is why we are seeing 30 degrees in here because we are using a 60 degree tool. The only time this option is available for us to edit is when we are using a ball nose tool when we need to tell the software at which angle we want to cut our chamfer. Next, we'll need to specify the width or the cut depth where each value is calculated according to the other. For example, if we are adamant that we want our chamfer to be a total of a quarter inch, I will enter this value and you'll see the cut depth will change in the software automatically. So if we put in 0.25 in here, you see that our cut depth is automatically updated for us. This is based on the angle that we've entered. Another example would be that if we want the machine to cut the chamfer for the full depth of our material, we could enter a cut depth of the thickness of our material. So in this case, if we don't remember our thickness, we can just type in Z and then press equals and the software will automatically grab that for us. And you'll see that our width has been updated appropriately. The next field we need to look at is called overcut. It is always best to make sure your tool definitions are correct in your tool database. If for some reason your V-bit or engraving tool has a flat point, you may want to consider using an overcut amount. When using a chamfer toolpath, the software will run the center of your tool along the line. For example, if your V-bit does not come to a point but has a flat spot at the tip, you will be cutting the material away from the inside or the outside of the line, seeing as the center of your tool is in the center of the flat area. The overcut will allow you to compensate for that by moving the tool so that you can run the edge of the flat along the line, and also it will cut a bit deeper so that you will not be left with a step. You may need to run a few test parts to ensure the overcut distance is correct for your tool. So if we want to take a look at adding an overcut of 0 0.01, notice the maximum cut depth here changes just slightly. 
and we'll delete that out of there. The last value shows the maximum cut depth, where the value is grayed out and is locked from editing, but is there to inform us. If you are using a V-bit tool, this value will always be exactly the same as the cut depth. If you're using a round tool, then this value is a little bit more than the cut depth specified, as it has to consider the fact that we are using a rounded tool and has to cut a little bit deeper to achieve the requested width or cut depth entered. But we'll look at that a little bit later in a different example. But as you saw a second ago, that same thing applies if we decide to apply a bit of an overcut. We'll need to go just slightly deeper in order to achieve the full cut depth. Next up, we need to specify the chamfer type. We need to think whether or not we would like to have our chamfer start on the inside or the outside of the selected vector in the 2D view. Also, we have an opportunity to choose whether we want to slope our chamfer downwards or slope it upwards. Now you may have noticed that the thumbnail here will change depending on what options you have chosen. And this is a reflection of what is happening in the 2D view based on this selected vector. And also you see we have these arrow heads showing up from either the inside or pointing from the inside or the outside of our vector that we have selected. And the end point or the tip of the arrow is actually the deepest part of our chamfer. That's a good little tip to remember. For our first example, we are going to choose a chamfer type of inside and we are going to slope upwards. And you'll see that in our 2D view, we have our vector selected and the arrows are pointing from the inside down. And that means the deepest spot will be on this vector right here or running along this vector. And also you'll see that the icon in the chamfer type has been updated. So you'll see we'll get a flat top with the chamfer going down and meeting at the pink or purple line, which is a reflection of the vector that we have chosen here in our 2D view. For now, we're just going to leave this named chamfer one, and then we'll calculate that. Now, right away, we're going to be told that we are going to cut through our material, but we know that already. So I'm just going to click OK. And we're brought straight to our toolpath preview. If we take a look at this, you'll see that if I zoom in a little bit, what's actually happening. The tool is going to run down to the deep part of this, and we'll get the chamfer on the inside of our line, and we'll have a flat top. So let's look straight down this again. Let's preview our visible tool pass, and you can see exactly what we're going to get. And that looks perfect. Let's look straight down again, and let's tile our views. And let's close this. Now, if we wanted to, we could go ahead and use the same vector and run a profile tool path around that so we can actually cut this piece out of our material. Let's go ahead and have a look at that. So with that vector selected, we're going to choose to cut a profile tool path. We're going to have a start depth of zero. We're going to go ahead and have the cut depth equal to our thickness of our material. So we're going to put Z in there and press equals. We're not going to show our advanced toolpath options. We're going to cut outside that line. We're not going to use ramp or plunge moves. We're not going to add any tabs. We're just going to leave the name as it is already. And we can just press calculate. And let's preview our visible toolpath. And you'll see now we have that chamfered part cut out of our material. Let's close that down. Now for our next demonstration, let's go ahead and choose this other vector here that's in our 2D view and create a chamfer toolpath from that. So again, we're going to have a start depth of zero. We're going to use the same V bit here. We're going to keep all the settings exactly the same, but we're going to change our direction of our slope to downwards. And we're going to leave the name as it is and we'll click calculate. And again, we're going to cut with this warning, but we know we're going to cut through our material. So let's just click OK. And let's preview our visible toolpath. And you'll see what's happening. We're going from the vector down to the deepest part. And now if we wanted to, we could pocket out the middle of this. So we could use this maybe as a countersink hole for a screw. Let's go straight down on that. Now, how are we going to figure out what the offset needs to be so that we can go ahead and create that pocket? Well, to do that, we can just get the information from our chamfer toolpath. So if we open that back up again, we can see our width is right here. So if we select this text, we right click on that and we can say copy value. Then what we can do is we can switch over to our design tab 
And with that vector selected, we can choose to offset that. We're going to offset inwards, and then we can paste that value in there. And then we can offset that inwards, and we can close this down. Let's go back to our Tool Paths tab. With that vector selected, we can close this down, and we can choose to create a pocket toolpath. And we're going to start at zero. We're going to go all the way through our material. So we're going to type in Z and equals. We're going to remove out the, the eighth inch end mill here. We don't need that. We're just going to go with one tool. We can choose an offset toolpath type. All of this is perfectly fine. We're going to leave the name as it is, and then we can calculate that and preview our visible toolpaths. There we have it. We can close that down. What can we do if we don't have a V-bit tool that matches the angle that we want to machine the chamfer at? This is where we could use the ball nose tool instead. Let's choose this vector right here and go ahead and create a new chamfer toolpath. Again, we're going to have our start depth going to be set to zero, but we're going to select a new tool. In this case, we're going to choose a quarter inch ball nose and we're going to click select. And the angle that we want is going to be 45 degrees. And we want to make sure that our cut depth is going to be the full depth of the material. So let's just put in Z equals. Now you're going to notice that our maximum cut depth is a little bit deeper than the cut depth that we specified. And this is to help to compensate for the round bottom of a ball nose end mill. Having this slightly deeper cut depth will allow us to cut past the cusp of the cutter and give us a nice clean angle at the bottom of our chamfer. And click outside and slope upwards. And we're gonna leave the name as it is and we can just go ahead and click calculate. Again, we'll be told that we're gonna to cut through our material, but we know that's gonna happen, so we can just click OK. Let's preview our visible toolpath and have a look at what's happened here. OK, as it stands, it isn't exactly smooth. And this is, comes down to the pass depth of the tool itself. So if we decrease the pass depth, that'll create smaller steps and the results will be much smoother. Let's close this down and go back into our chamfer toolpath. Let's edit our tool and let's change our path depth to be half of that divided by two, press equals. We can click OK. And let's recalculate that toolpath. And let's slow this down a little bit so we can see it. And let's preview that selected toolpath. And you'll see that it cleaned it up quite nicely in the end. So let's close this down. It's also worth noting here that you're unable to create a clearance pass in a chamfer toolpath. And if this is something that you wanted to do, then you're better off using a molding toolpath. To learn how to use the molding toolpath, please refer to the molding toolpath guide, which you can find in the related video section below this tutorial. Okay, for our last example, let's have a look at choosing this vector right here and close down our 3D preview and go back to our chamfer toolpath settings. This one, we're still going to start at a start depth of zero, but we're going to choose a different tool, not the V-bit. We're going to use another ball nose. It's going to be the 1 8 inch ball nose. And we're going to check to make sure our pass depth is set to 0 0.025, and it is. So that's great. And we can just click on Select. Now, we want our angle to be around 30 degrees, and that's conveniently already in there for us. But I want to make sure that the width is going to be set to 0 0.15 of an inch. We want the width of this chamfer to be 0.15 of an inch. Notice the cut depth has been updated, and so is our maximum cut depth has been modified for us as well. Now in this case, we want to go out, and we want to slope down. And it's reflected here in the icon, and also in the arrows that we have here in our 2D view. And we're just going to leave the name as it is, and we can just choose Calculate. And now let's look straight down on our 3D view. And we can preview that visible toolpath. And that's exactly what we were looking for. Now let's go ahead and run a profile cut around this to cut this part out. So let's close that down. But we're going to want to use this vector to start with, but we need to know how far out we have to go. Well, because we typed in that 0 0.15 into the width of our chamfer, we know what the offset needs to be. So let's go back over to our Design tab, choose Offset. 
Make sure we have that vector selected. We're going to go outwards. Make sure our distance is set to 0 0.15. And we can offset that outwards and close that down. Let's go back over to our Toolpaths tab. Choose this new vector that we created and create a profile toolpath. Start depth is going to be zero. We're going to cut all the way through our material. We may as well use that quarter inch end mill. We're going to cut outside the line that we just created. No ramp moves, no tabs. Leave the name as it is and we can calculate that. And we'll preview our visible toolpath. And you'll see our result is a part that has a chamfer at the top and then a straight wall at the bottom. Could almost be used for a plug. Let's look straight down that again and then close down our preview. Now that we have all that understood, let's have a look at a real world example where we're going to use this chamfer toolpath to create some countersunk holes in a house sign. Let's just go ahead now and open up a new file. So we're going to go to File and we're going to Open. And then we're going to choose Chamfer Toolpath Guide Example Number 2 and click Open. And we're not going to save off our changes that we made, so I'm just going to click No. Now in our 2D view, you're going to see that we have a series of vectors already pre-created for you. And if we go ahead and take a look at our Toolpaths tab, we already have some Toolpaths already set up. So let's have a look at what we've done here, and then we can go ahead and create our chamfer Toolpaths for the countersinking of our screws. So let's tile our view right quickly here, and we'll preview down to these one at a time. So first of all, we have some V-carve here set up for our number 22. And that looks really nice. And then we've added a chamfer toolpath around the outside edge of this. So let's preview that visible toolpath. That looks great. And then based on what we saw earlier in our examples, I've offset this inside line outwards to give me a profile vector so I could cut my sign out. So let's have a look at that. And then to aid in the help of us creating these holes or the countersunk part of the holes, I've also created a drill bit toolpath so we can pre-drill the holes through our sign. So let's just go ahead and preview that. And let's delete out this waste material here so we can see our sign, how it is. And that looks really great. So let's look straight down on this. Now let's have a think about how we are going to create the chamfered edge of these holes. The idea of having this countersunk edge or the chamfered edge is so that the head of our screw does not stick up proud of the face of our sign. So it creates a little bit of a bevel there so the seat of our screw head can nestle in there nice and tight. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that in our 2D view here, we have both of these vectors selected. So we can hold down our shift key and we have them selected now and we can go over to our chamfer toolpath. Now our start depth is going to be at the top of our material. We're going to use a 60 degree V-bit for this. And we want to make sure that the width of our chamfer is half of the diameter of our hole. So these are our quarter inch holes. So if we go ahead and type in 0.25 divided by 2 and then press equals, the software will do the math for us right in that field. And you'll see that we're given our cut depth. Now wouldn't it be nice if our V-bit could go over and plunge down to this cut depth and come back out again and move on to the next hole. Well, we can do that easily just by changing the pass depth of our cutter to the cut depth plus a little bit. So let's go ahead and take a look at our tool setup here. Right here when we have our pass depth, let's go ahead and type in here 0 0.217. Okay, that's slightly deeper than what we need to go for our cut depth, and we can just click OK. And we're going to make sure that we go inside, and we're going to slope down. We can leave the name as it is, and we can just go Calculate. And let's preview our visible toolpath. And you'll see what we get is a nice chamfer. And if we go ahead and have a look at our toolpath, we're making one plunge for each hole. And that's a pretty efficient way of doing that. We're back into our first example again to look at some of the options in the chamfer toolpath form that we didn't look at before. So let's close this down and let's tile our views. And let's have a look at this first chamfer toolpath for a moment. First one you're going to see that we didn't go over is going to be cut direction. 
Now we have two different direction options, climb and conventional. And this is down to the way the cutting teeth on the tool engage with the material and the way the chips are removed and deposited. There is plenty of discussion on which is best to use as one may give you a better finish than the other. Our best advice is to give it a test. If your waste material has a better finish than your actual part, then simply reverse the direction. Or in other words, choose the other option. Now let's have a look at the use vector selection order. Let's close this down first of all. So if you wanted to go ahead and create a series of chamfers for these four circles, but you needed to do it in a certain order, then you can use that option and the software will respect the way that you actually selected your vectors. So for instance, if we create a new chamfer toolpath, and I'm gonna choose this one, hold down my shift key, and choose this one, and this one, and then this one. So I chose them in the order like that. And I can say use vector selection order, and I can calculate that. And if I reset my preview, you'll see that I actually go and do this one, I go across, I do this one, I go across and I do this one, and I go across and do this one. Okay, I can close that down. Let's take a look at that again. Now we can also use our selector here. What this will do is it'll automatically select vectors based on various criteria that you can define here. Now we're not gonna go into this in depth here. There's a number of other tutorials that actually cover this sort of stuff. So we're just gonna close this down. Let's close this down. And with that, this ends the chamfered toolpath guide.